Hey everybody, time for a bit of a COVID-19 update. As you can see, I've had my own special update. This is actually reversible, this mask. It cost me 20 bucks. 20 bucks for a mask. It's washable. It should last me the whole time through. And um, yeah, I hope it's worth it because, wow, it's just so inconvenient. You can see it's reversible. That's the other side. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try and do a, a vlog with a mask on. <laughs> it's very strange, it's very awkward with the glasses because I know you can put phone, people have got all sorts of suggestions with how to cope with a mask and wear glasses but it's very like if I breathe too much <sighs> fogs up and you know the, the weather's not so good maybe in summer it might be better, worse, I don't know anyway and breathing is just an issue because it seals pretty well and, you know, you want a bit of fresh air. I suppose then you breathe in all the COVID germs. And um, now that the whole of Victoria has gone, um, the state of Victoria has, we have to wear masks if we're outside. So that's just the way it is. We get fined $200 potentially if we don't wear a mask when we're going beyond the perimeter of our house. So. I thought I'd just wear a mask for this one for when I look back at my videos when I'm a really old man rather than just being an old man and I can think wow the things that we had to put up with that's amazing so there you go 2020 and uh, we've got a new whole new fashion concept I wonder if it'll take on and it will actually continue on beyond when um, COVID-19 has passed us by anyway we'll see what happens this is it for now. I probably won't go up the street with it looking like this. I'll probably turn it inside out so it looks like that. But anyway, there's a few options. I could wear a medical mask too. We've got plenty of them. So <laughs> anyway, it's a bit of fun. What we've been doing lately, last weekend, before this whole mask thing came into play, we went out on the Gippsland Lakes and had an absolutely fantastic day. It was perfectly still, as in there was no wind, blue skies, and it was like it was summer, other than the cold air, but it was still around 18, 19 degrees, and we had just the most perfect day on the water. The, the lakes were just like glass, skimming along through the water, when it's just like glass, it was, you know, it's a shame to have made a few waves with the boat, because it just looked so spectacular. Anyway, it was a great day out on the boat. We spent a couple of hours. Fortunately, um, we've got a friend named Tom who took us out beyond Painesville and we walked over some sand dunes to Bass Strait. And what do you think of Bass Strait, Jenny? I love it. I love the ocean. I love the sound of the waves. You don't often Everything. see it. You don't often see it as calm as this. And it's just a magnificent day. There is no wind and the sun's down low and it's like the ocean bass strait in this case blends with the skyline it's incredible bass strait is normally one of the most treacherous uh, bits of water in the world but last weekend it was almost as flat as the lakes and was it was just fantastic so we had a great time out on the water from painesville so been doing uh, reflections on our russian trip I know some people um, probably are not that interested, but once again, uh, it's a record for future reference and for people who are interested in Russia of what we got up to 26 years ago now, back in Krasnoyarsk and Moscow and the trip on the Trans-Siberian Railway. Of course, most of the recent videos that I'm putting up are really just slideshows. But quite interesting stuff, and for 26 years ago, it's um, quite impressive. <laughs> say hello to Harry. Harry wants to say hello to everybody else, and um, so long as she doesn't show too much of her backside. So, anyway, uh, yeah, quite a few videos of Russia being put on recently, and... Um, can't even see me smiling, so there you go. Ah, um, oh dear, and I'm starting to fog up again. 
So if you're interested in Russia in 1994, Soviet Russia, uh, in the transition from um, Gorbachev to Boris Yeltsin, we were there in the period when the White House, the Russian White House was stormed by Yeltsin and there was a lockdown. Uh, they, had a, they had their own lockdown for political reasons rather than for infectious reasons. And uh, it was interesting on the day that all the uh, blow up of political events in Moscow happened because they shut down the radios and the TV and there was no broadcasts inside Russia of what was going on politically. So we listened to a shortwave radio to find out what was going on in Moscow at that particular time. So uh, yes, the um, way politics works in Russia is quite different to how it works in most of the rest of the Western world anyway. And uh, politics at the moment with state government and blame game that goes on is quite interesting too. A modern social dilemma, I believe, is the way we do politics and just society in general. If something goes wrong, we're s most people are out to blame somebody for it. And it's just quite interesting how the blame game gets played so often these days. Something goes wrong, we're out to find somebody to blame. And of course, in COVID-19, we're blaming the Chinese, we're blaming 5G, we're blaming whoever we don't like. Uh, and um, conspiracy theories are ripe and all over the place and all quite disjointed. And um, I think the main conspiracy theory is that conspiracy theories are, are popular. And if you haven't got a good conspiracy theory, well, who wants to talk to you? So the fact that it's just an infection and that they do happen every now and again has seems to bypass many people and we want to blame politicians and scientists and whoever we're not particularly keen on at the moment. So anyway, that's my bit of a rant. And um, so there you go, that's my little COVID-19 update for the moment. And uh, I hope you're all having a good time with a mask and coping with not much ventilation. <sighs> because of these and um, Harry wants to say hi but I'm going to say goodbye.